Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. I'm, I'm David from David Southdoors, and welcome to another episode of Flat Time Commentary. Freeze! David, you fool. This is not Flat Time Commentary, this is Fly Fishing Basics. This is episode 2. That's right, 2. And we are going to look closer at different flies and hatchings and what you need to know about the insects we are uh, fishing with while we are fly tying, so in the fly fishing. So uh, hang on. Okay, these are the flies I'm going to talk uh, really quick about today. I can't go too deep into every single fly because the video would be extremely long then and um, I guess it will be pretty boring to watch so most of you guys would leave before I was uh, finished with uh, talking about every single fly. But these are some mayflies, the Bayet Zrodane, Spent Spinner and Empera Vulgata. The Bayet Zrodane is hatching very early in, uh, in Norway here and I guess in other Scandinavian and uh, you know not that warm climax too. So it starts hatching the 15th of, of April and uh, will stop hatching the 15th of October. We call this uh, fly the Mukkavarsflue uh, on the region. That means shit weather fly. So that means that the fly here is often hatching when it's raining and you know like, like really wet and hard conditions. But you might get really great fishing then with the Bayat Surudani fly. The Empera Vulgata is the biggest mayfly in lakes around uh, Norway. You will won't find it by the coast of Norway, only where it's a little bit colder and uh, temperature. And yeah, this fly is really cool. Mine looks a little bit messed up. No, I need to shape it a little bit better next time. But it starts hatching the 15th of May, which is pretty early in the year. And it stops hatching the 15th of July, which is my birthday. The spent spinners here is not its own mayfly, but it is the dead mayflies of the other mayflies. So you know, this often in this in the in late summer evenings, and you might see these flies falling down. They have laid their eggs. The mayflies they are falling down to the water, and. Um, the fish is rising really slowly for these flies. So I caught my trout on 1.2 kilos on a spent spinner dry fly. These flies here is the griffins gnat flies. This flies is hatching. Um, these flies are hatching very early and actually not it's not even early it's all around the year when uh, it is uh, no ice on the waters this flies will uh, start hatching and I've caught a lot of fish on this griffin's gnat and uh, you know they work really great all around the year and uh, if there's a river here in Norway right now is not covered by ice, and I know there is. So um, this fly will be hatching there, because that's you know the what the fish is taking in the winter, and also this one, the daddy long legs, is a fly that's hatching all around the year. Both of these flies are very important in the winter, uh, and on the mountains in the in in the mountains in the summer stuff like that if there's no other things hatching 
you should try tying on a daddy long legs and uh, you might catch fish on it so yeah at the end now of our fly course we are going to just talk about these flies these flies are flies that you can tie on even though there's not a hatching and uh, you know just we have it called fish finders fish finders even though there's no hatching no fish is rising you, know, you should try to tie on a red tag with this bright red tail it is one of those flies that the fish just can't refuse so thanks for watching guys um, if you want to watch episode 1 of Fly Tying Basics where I talk about different kind of fly fishing gear that you will need to go fly fishing you should uh, check that out there's a link in the description for the full playlist uh, I hope you'll um, join me next uh, time when we are going to to talk about fly casting and I'm also going to show you guys some fly casting outdoors and uh, hopefully manage, manage to teach you guys a little bit about different fly casting techniques I'm not an expert when it comes to fly casting but um, you know hopefully I will um, be able to teach the beginners a little bit and uh, yeah I hope you learned a lot from this video about the some of the flies that we'll, uh, we can use I'm not able to go through all of the flies because there really is a lot and I don't I just don't got enough time and uh, knowledge to just cover all the flies but these are the flies that in my eyes are um, maybe the most important at least for fishing in Norway and uh, yeah you just got to have all of these flies so thanks for watching don't forget to check out David's Outdoors on Facebook and uh, have a nice day.